Therefore, it is time for members' statements. The member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to share a statement, and before I go into in depth, I want to reflect on what we heard this morning during question period. You know, our leader, Patrick Brown, stood in this House and said, how can this government waste $120,000 on a six-foot rubber duck? How does that attract tourism to Ontario? And I, I share that with you because I absolutely agree with him. And what I'm going to do is now read in a poem by a grade five student from Teeswater, Ontario. His name is Cameron Hogg, and we met with him at STEAM, an initiative uh, hosted by the Bruce Gray Catholic School Board. And I really tip my hat to Cam because this is what we need to be thinking about when we're celebrating Ontario this summer. And he puts it in a Canadian perspective. And he said, my mom and dad read and gave, it to, gave me the idea to send it to you. I hope you like it. And so I say, I hope you like it as well. Canada, the place to be. Hockey is the greatest game. Canada has all the fame. In Canada, you see the moose and the Canadian goose. We farm cows, chicks, and chickens, and goats, and, we're gent and we gently roll in boats. Down the Great Lakes, many people fish without a care or even a wish. We have poutine fries and good pumpkin pies. We mine diamonds, nickel, and gold, all in the freezing cold. Maple syrup comes from the trees, delicious honey from the bees. From coast to coast, 150 years we boast. Ten provinces, three territories, so much to see. Oh, Canada is the best place to Thank be. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Essex. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, I am both saddened and honoured to rise today to pay tribute to a working-class hero from my community who passed away last week. Roly Marentet was a humble giant of the labour community and a fierce advocate for injured workers in Windsor and Essex County. Roly was a member of Unifor Local 444 and spent 35 years working for Chrysler Canada. It was his early days working in the maintenance department and in the old engine plant that Roly was exposed to the hazards that workers were forced to endure and to suffer without many of the legislative protections that we enjoy today. Roley went on to become the regional ergonomics representative for all of Chrysler's Windsor operations, and in that role, Roley was able to work with engineers and vendors to implement workstation designs, changes that led to dramatic decreases in injuries. The list of Roley's community contributions is enormous, and there is not enough time to list them all, but here are some of the highlights. He was a Young Worker Awareness Program Director. He uh, received unemployment of uh, unemployed help center of Windsor designations. He was participant in the Windsor District Labor, Labor Council, a health and safety committee, the Essex County District Health Council, in injured workers coalition, uh, CAW Local 444. He was a recipient of the Clean Water Alliance Award, Charles Brooks Labor Appreciation Award, recipient of the Ontario Federation of Labor's Occupational Disability Response Team. Speaker Rowley never took a step back. He was unwavering in his dedication to protecting vulnerable workers. We miss him, we love him. We thank his family, Sandy, his wife, Sandy, and his sons, James and Scott, on behalf of the Ontario NDP. Thank you, Rowley. We will continue the fight. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Rowley. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Beaches East York. Well, thank you, Speaker. And today I'd like to celebrate and acknowledge the uh, very important contributions of hundreds of volunteers that make summer sports a reality in Beaches East York. We are so fortunate to have many options for aspiring athletics in the community, for baseball at Stan Wadlow Park to soccer at East York Collegiate, softball at Totten Park and lacrosse at Kew Beach. And athletics, as we know, are crucial to the development of young minds and bodies in our community. It teaches them how to cope with adversity and learn about good sportsmanship and thus help them become leaders in the process. But none of these group speakers could happen and could function, and our kids wouldn't benefit if it wasn't for the time and dedication of countless volunteers like the president of East York Baseball, Mike Clark, as well as camp coordinator Andrew Pace and sponsorship lead Beverly East. David Breach is the president of Toronto East Baseball, or Toronto, East Toronto Baseball, and the East York presidents for the soccer of Dr Dragon and Theo Zagar, along with the sponsorship lead, good friend Karen Somerville. Michael Tabersham, the president of Community Beach Soccer, and Bolton Kirkhoff, the president of Topham Park Softball. And of course, 
great old Frank Ham, who's president of Toronto Beaches Lacrosse. Speaker, I would ask the House to get up and join me in thanking these incredible individuals and all of their volunteers for their leadership, their dedication, and their commitment to the future of our kids and of our province. Everybody have a great summer. Play safe, play hard. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Renfrew at the St. Pembroke. Thank you, Speaker. On Sunday, May 7th, I was joined by over 900 walkers and runners in the 11th annual Hike for Hospice. Hike for Hospice is the largest fundraiser for Hospice Renfrew, a six-bed home that serves all communities in Renfrew County. Some 10 years ago, I was honoured to be there when the supporters of compassionate end-of-life care had their dreams partially fulfilled with the groundbreaking for the Hospice Renfrew building. I want to thank that original group, particularly Jim McKilligan. Jim McKilligan, from the time I was first elected, he was pushing hard to bring hospice care to Renfrew County. Since then, community support has been nothing short of amazing. Additionally, I've had the opportunity to tour Hospice Renfrew on numerous occasions, to meet with its board, and I speak with its executive director, Maureen Sullivan Vance, on a regular basis. I have never failed to be astounded by the level of care, compassion, and understanding that its residents and their families are treated, are treated to as part of a loved one's end-of-life experience. This year, Hike for Hospice raised an amazing $150,000, with money still coming in. That's over $50,000 more than last year's record-breaking number. Congratulations and thank you to the organizers whose tireless efforts made those results possible. Thank you to the over 900 participants for your support of this amazing place. And last but not least, thank you to all the people who gave whatever they could to ensure that compassionate end-of-life care is available for those in need. Once again, you have demonstrated your hearts are as big as the valley itself. Thank you. Thank you. Further members, things. The member from Algoma, Manitoulin. Thank you, Speaker. And we're coming to the end of May. May being Lyme Awareness Month, and I want to recognize some tireless advocates who have helped me understand and work towards trying to help those individuals that are fighting Lyme disease. I want to thank Rosanna McNaught for her tireless support. Dr. Nadie Eckler, Dr. Tim Cook, Ellen Hose, Linda Kelso, Jean Pacey, Dr. Beth Bateman. I also want to shout out to Lyme Out Loud Kids Canada. Kerry Weiss, Joanna Patrickis, who introduced me to worldwide recognized Dr. Armin Schwarzbach, Dr. Christian Perone, Dr. Simon Kola, Dr. Richard Horowitz, and Professor Jer Jerkin Reeks, Lyme Madness uh, advocate Lori uh, Dennis, who has helped me immensely understanding this uh, great, uh, great illness. Sarah Bass, who is uh, who spoke on my behalf over in Burlington this weekend, and Paige Spencer, who was with me with the minister in our, our Lyme Focus Group just last week, talking about it. Who has been now in the hospital since then and is still in the hospital. Listen, Speaker. The month is going to come to an end, but guess what? People with Lyme are still going to continue to suffer, and we need to make sure that we create an environment of acceptance and acknowledgement, and we need to go into action. These people need care, and what they want is for us to challenge ourselves. I'm challenging everybody in this room. Take on the challenge. Take a bite out of Lyme. It's very simple. Here's the Lyme. Take a bite out of it. Mm. You suffer that prop. That's all I was going to say. Great. <laughs> Further member statements, the member from Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Speaker. The tech sector in Waterloo Region is always moving quickly, and the innovators driving this industry want and need a transit system that moves just as quickly. Recently, I was pleased to welcome to the Google headquarters in my riding of Kitchener Centre our Premier, Transportation Minister, and the Minister for Natural Resources and Forestry. The Premier came to announce that the province is moving forward with a plan for Canada's first high-speed rail. This includes preliminary design work and a $15 million comprehensive environmental assessment. Speaker, Phase 1 of the plan calls for upgrading existing track between Toronto and Kitchener and then laying down new dedicated rail between Kitchener and London. Phase 2 stretches from London to Windsor. Speaker, these trains are going to travel at 250 kilometres per hour. Leaving the station in Kitchener, you'll be able to get to Pearson Airport in just 32 minutes. Wow. And 
and then on to Union Station and downtown Toronto in 48 minutes. In my community, better connectivity is tied to economic success, and not just for the tech sector, but for other businesses, organizations, students, and anyone who wants to avoid the 401 where precious time is lost while you're stuck in traffic. And saving time means saving lost productivity dollars. Getting those cars off the road also supports our plan for a low carbon economy. Speaker, in my community, we're all aboard for high speed rail. It's an idea whose plan has come. Thank you. Further members' statements? The member from Haldeman, Norfolk. Thanks, Speaker. It's one of the people know Norfolk County strawberries were out on the market uh, this past weekend, and of course asparagus. And I want to stress that a, uh, a balanced diet, rich in fruit and vegetables, is a cornerstone of good health. It's important for managing weight, reducing the incidence of chronic disease. Yet uh, we consume fewer serv few servings of these uh, products and are recommended in Canada's food guide. There's reasons for this: affordability accessibility, availability of fruit and vegetables, a lack of uh, food literacy. The Canadian Produce Marketing Association and the Canadian Public Health Association are calling on government at all levels to implement an integrated and collaborative approach to increase fruit and vegetable consumption by one serving a day over the next five years. Consuming seven portions of fruit and vegetables is linked to a 42 per cent reduction of risk of death from all cases of chronic illness, a 25 per cent reduction in the risk of cancer, and a 31 per cent lower risk of heart disease and stroke. Canada's Food Guide recommends men consume 8 to 10 servings and women should consume 7 to 8 servings of fruit and vegetables a day. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from to, miss, uh, to the member from uh, to Windsor, to come see. Well, thank you, Speaker. As you know, the Windsor Spitfires won the MasterCard Memorial Cup on Sunday. Back in 2009 and 2010, they won back-to-back -back Memorial Cups. Well, I'm proud to stand here today and tell you about our latest back-to-back -back championship. This time, it's our gold medal winning championship EMS paramedics team from Windsor and Essex County. Ooh. That's right, they went back to the Czech Republic to defend their international title, and they won it again last weekend. EMS Team Canada East came away with the gold. Congratulations to Team Captain Chris Kerwin from my riding of Windsor Tecumseh, Lance Hoover, Mike Filio, and Sean May. The win speaks volumes to the caliber of paramedics that serve us all from all across Ontario. Truly, Speaker, Ontario's paramedics have now proven it twice. They are the best on the entire planet. They beat 20 other, 21 other teams from around the world. The competition took place over a 24-hour period deep in the Giesnik Mountains in the Czech Republic. Teams were scored on how well they completed mass casualty simulations, how they dealt with complex medical cases with critical patients repelling and intense scenarios on forest mountainsides in the dark. It's the first time in the competition's 21-year history that a team has won back-to-back -back gold. Hungary came in second, Austria was third. Team Canada West from BC finished in a respectable sixth place speaker. Our gold-winning team are all members of the Canadian Union of Public Employees, and they deserve a tip of the hat and congratulations from all of us here at the Ontario Legislature. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank all members of the House on both sides who voted today to pass Bill 65, the uh, School Safety Zones Act. And this legislation enables municipalities, if they so choose, to install a modern uh, photo radar technology and other uh, technical devices to make areas around our schools safer. And also, there's other areas they can call community safety zones. They can also do that if the municipality so wishes. So this is uh, an important day for our children and uh, safety. You know, we've had three unfortunate deaths in the city of Toronto alone in the last couple of years. We had the young girl in Leaside killed near her school. We had another 
a young boy in Scarborough killed in front of his school. On the weekend, we had a five-year-old on a bicycle with his grandfather on the Martin Goodman Trail, killed. So I think parents are asking us to do what we can to make areas around schools or trails safer. So this will help. And I applaud all the members of the House, the Minister of Transportation, for his great leadership on this, because this is an act that will help protect our children around our schools and even our seniors around their uh, places of residence so that traffic will be slowed down. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I thank, I thank all members for their statements. It's